opening uh, the Montpelier School uh, Board of Directors meeting um, on March 18th, uh, 2020. Uh, so we were meeting under unusual circumstances. Uh, Jerry has to um, announce. Oh, something. Jerry, could you please announce that you're here? Unmute yourself, Jerry, and, and just tell everybody you're here. Is she there? There she is. Jerry, unmute yourself. Go down to the bottom and you put your cursor down to the bottom of your screen. Where should I sit? Oh, I thought you were going to be in uh, Zoom. Okay. There you go. This, you can sit back here. this is Jerry. Uh, you can just put a chair right there. Yeah, between. Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> All right, Jerry just announced she was here. Okay. Um, so I'm meeting under unusual circumstances. Uh, again, uh, this is probably the last in-person meeting we'll have until uh, schools are deemed safe to return to, uh, which is right now scheduled for April 6th, although I probably won't be surprising anyone by saying if it, it gets extended beyond that, it's, um, Probably not going to be something that's unlikely. Uh, and again, I want to reiterate um, that thanks to all the effort that's been put in over the last several days um, from Libby and the administration on down to our teachers, to our employees, to our custodians, uh, to the students, to the parents, to the community as a whole, it's been an extraordinary, extraordinary few days. Um, and uh, We've done, I think, a fantastic job of, of communicating and putting in place the systems we need, which is a work in progress. Uh, you know, there's still a lot of work to do, a lot of figuring out to do, uh, but um, the response of this district has been fantastic, and the response of this community has been fantastic. Uh, and I really just want to acknowledge uh, the great work everyone has put in, um, and also acknowledge that there's a lot to be done, and this is going to be. Uh, potentially a uh, very long road, and so we really need to keep our chins up and, um, you know, roll with it and be prepared and, and keep uh, keep working hard and think, keep thinking creatively and keep making sure that we put uh, safety first and our health first and our kids first. So um, thank you to everyone. Um, the first order is public comment, and I we have a, a set up. Um, we can do the Google Doc first. <laughs> the Google Doc that people put in questions beforehand. Yes. Um, so do you want to protocol? We didn't talk about this. So it is public comment. Do you want to just kind of put them out there, or do you want me to answer them if I can quickly? Or um, why don't I think because it's unusual? Why don't we uh, Why don't we just go through and answer them? Okay. If we can. Yeah. If we can. Um, okay, so this is from Amy, uh, I'm sorry, Amy, if I mess up your last name, Den Gendra, G-E-N-D-R-O-N. I think it's Gendron. Gendron. Gendron, thank you. Um, Amy says, thank you for all you have done. It is a huge task with minimal guidance. I have not seen a response from the district about child care support for essential health care workers, and I understand from the governor's address that this is a responsibility of schools. I understand why it may not be all figured out at this time, but is, it, but is it something that is being worked on? And I apologize if it's in Libby's letters from, Tuesday, from today, which was Tuesday. Uh, they're not downloading on my devices, so I haven't been able to read them. So first, Amy, make sure you go to our website, because they're all, all the letters are on the website um, that you can access as well. And I encourage anybody to check out that website. They're updated daily um, with any information that needs to be had that the district has sent out. Um, so please go to the website. If you also follow us, I know not everybody's on social media, but if you follow us on social media and Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, all of that information is, is posted as soon as it goes out. The address that my wonderful assistant right now is writing into the Google Doc <laughs> for me is uh, our website www.mrpsvt.org slash COVID-19 slash com or dash communication. Um, but if you just go to our main webpage, you'll find it pretty easily. And then our uh, hashtag on most social media is at MRPSVT. 
Um, we're going to talk about child care support for essential health care workers during the board meeting, so I think that question will be answered yep. in a bit. Um, but yes, we, we are working on it. Uh, two is from Larry Seligman. Seligman. Seligman, thank you. <laughs> 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 um, how do we ensure that we are receiving emails in specific? An email went out to MHS students and parents this afternoon, yet I didn't receive it. Rather than troubleshooting each user, I would suggest that schools post all such email to a central location, um, Facebook or website. We all want to stay informed, not burden the administrators. We appreciate that. But we do, not, we do need a process to ensure that people don't fall through the cracks. If you don't receive an email, you don't know you missed it because you didn't receive it. Uh, thanks again to all, all working so hard to get us through what will be a difficult couple of months. Um, so again, go to, our, go to our website often, um, and then contact information for principals is on the same page there. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is uh, we use PowerSchool. The way we communicate and send things out is through PowerSchool, which is our student information system. That is prob probably the most popular student information st system in the nation and they all use their, the same communication. And so um, PowerSchool was completely overloaded when this started. We were all sending out communication at the same time, which completely slowed down the user. And since then, um, we have a tech guy named Matt Moody, who's, who's new to the position and yet doing amazing with um, a very tight turnaround on how to learn, learn this. And from my understanding, and I'm not Matt, and he would probably correct me on some of these points, is that PowerSchool is pulling from different fields. So uh, Matt has had 47 requests that they weren't getting email so far. He's been keeping track of those. Five of those were because parents just had um, old email addresses in the system, and so we fixed that really quickly. And others were, we didn't know. Sometimes you get an email one day, and the next day you win it. So we think it's pulling from weird fields sometimes because it's overwhelmed, but we're not sure. Power School is working on it. We have multiple help desk tickets into them. Um, but you would get constant information if you check the COVID-19 website page every time. Um, is that yep. nice for them? Uh, and those are the two questions in the, in the public in the, uh, that were given to us beforehand. Great. And do we have any in the Zoom room that you know? Anna, do we have any in the Zoom room for Adrian? Is Adrian on this? Hey, uh, no, not at this time, Anna says. Great. I believe she and Adrian are talking. <laughs> <laughs> this is like tech savvy people. <laughs> We're all going to be tech savvy by the time this is over. Amen. Um, Consent agenda, do I have a motion from afar to approve the consent agenda? I, I had corrections to the minutes. I'm not sure how to, there were just two. We can, we can pull the minutes and talk about okay. it. Yeah. Do I need to make a motion to? A motion oh, to approve the Bridget consent agenda. Bridget will pull the, pull, make right. a motion, because she's the only one really knows the words. Oh. <laughs> I move that we approve the consent agenda without the minutes. I second. Second. All, all those in favor, we don't have to do roll call because we're in person, right? Right, only Jerry had to say that she was here, and she Great. did. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Jerry's Okay. Jerry's in, Jerry's in, Jerry's Jerry's in agreement. Jerry's in agreement, yes. <laughs> um, so, Jill, we can, we can talk about the minutes. Okay. It was just two little things on the emergency meeting. It just says Wednesday, March 13th, and it was Friday, March 13th. Mm -hmm. um, um, yes. And then Hope, Hope um, Petrara was here. She's absent on here, but I remember she, yeah, she was here. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah. Anna could fix those two things. Um, can I have a motion to approve the minutes with those two corrections? I move to approve the minutes with those two corrections. Do I have a second? All I second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Um, so board discussion, obviously, our policy monitoring reports, we should probably do pretty quickly, and then I think we should move to the Yeah, there's more on there. Some of those were on from the last board meeting, and we just never discussed them or approved them. Yeah, so that's why they're on there for this time around, yeah. too. Do you have any questions about the policy monitoring reports? I do not. No. Uh, motion to approve. So 
So moved. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Oh, second. Second. <laughs> second. second. Okay. Second from our. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Thank you. Um, COVID 19. COVID 19. Uh, so before I forget, just two, two pieces that um, this obviously may change over time, but for right now, um, mainly for Andrew Stein on our board, that we should be prepared for overspending from our fund balance in um, food service due to revenue loss. Um, and we pay our employees out of their revenue, uh, mm -hmm. and we are paying our food service employees. Um, and then just potentially technology needs, um, and I'll talk about that in a second. But we did um, send some special education devices home, like communication devices, that are technically ours to send home. Um, but in a moment where we needed to make a very definitive decision quickly without going through committees or vendors, I said send them home. There's a large possibility they will be broken at home and we'll yeah. be on the hook to pay for them, but we'll be on the hook to pay for them. So um, that, the, right now, those are where we're expecting um, <coughs> overspending. So mm -hmm. I just wanted the board to know that because one of your responsibilities is financial. Yeah. And that's a great reminder. I've had this discussion with numerous community members in the past year about our fund balance. This is why we have a fund balance. So exactly. that we, next year, this community is going to be reeling economically in one way or another from all of this. And because we have this fund balance that we can dip into, we're not going to ship that. Right. Hopefully, that, that will help. Hopefully, we won't have to ship that to uh, have it broken. Not too much of it. And Grant Geisler has turned off his camera right now. He is on, on the call as well, but um, I know exactly what his face looks like right now, but he agrees with us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to speak for him because I can meet him now. <laughs> um, so technology needs. Today, um, Mike Barry is a little inundated with technology requests. Um, and I just want to explain why devices weren't sent home with all kids, even though in our upper grades we're pretty much one-to-one. -one. Um, because our Chromebooks are hooked up, and I could be wrong here, so Mike will chime in when I'm wrong. Um, but our, our Chromebooks are hooked up to our system, our internet, and in order for them to work on a different person's system, we would have to take them all, basically clean them up, clean them out of our system, and re-up. You know, like, I don't know the technological terms for that. Somebody else probably does. But we, we'd have to do that with each and every device. Um, and so we, we um, surveyed face-to-face -face each kid in the middle and high school. Oh, Mike says he can sum it up if you'd like. Yes, why don't you sum it up in more technical terms than what I did, please? OK. You were doing great. <laughs> me with the wires. <laughs> um, so first, I, I'd like to just say that um, our tech support guys have really come through yes, in a pinch yeah. here um, in, a, in a big way. Um, basically, what we needed was we needed a week's notice to be able to deploy almost 800 devices. Um, and we didn't have a week's notice. It wasn't until Sunday night that we knew we were closing. So we just didn't have enough time. So what we did was we prioritized those students that we knew had zero device. Um, and in working with the boys today and then talking with Libby, we have a plan moving forward to be able to have a, a lending system where families that now feel like they need a, a Chromebook or a Chrome device, we can have them sign out some of our existing devices. But we're going to work on that next week. Um, we're down in terms of how many of our tech support folks are available. Um, to us, so we're really just doing the best we can, and we've had a lot of great conversations with families in the community about it. Yeah, so that's going to take at least a week to to get going. So, our, so since we're in this maintenance phase, where we're maintaining learning right now. We want to tell just to tell families that there is no synchronous learning happening. So, if like Anakit needs his device during the day for his work life, and a kid can't get on it. If that's the device in the house, that's okay. You know, that Anakin's um, lovely child can, can access that device later on and do, do what she needs to do from, at a later time. Um, and every, just my mantra through this whole thing is we're gonna keep this as simple as possible and we are going to do the best we can. And that's the same message I would give to parents. Do the best you can. Um, and we will be unleashing our devices from our system and then making them accessible to families 
moving forward after um, next week. And of course, we'll be in communication with you when we're ready for that um, to happen. Is there a plan for maintenance, support maintenance, once the devices are out? Because we're going to do again. We're going to do the best we can. So we do have on our COVID nineteen webpage. You can find technology support. A link. Mike and his team, um, and I would reiterate that his team have worked like gangbusters. Um, have made a blog, a curriculum instruction technology blog, and anybody can subscribe to that in our family, Montpelier family, um, Roxbury, Montpelier Roxbury family, and. Uh, and so I suggest everybody does um, for tech support and, the, and any tech support that's needed going forward. We're going to do the best. We can't go to homes, yeah. you know. So it would be it would be virtual support, <laughs> but we'll try. We'll try. Um, and just a, a note: um, I mentioned in the emergency board meeting that when you do have a school device at home, then our Go Guardian and all our safety features still work on that. So. Um, it doesn't matter who the user is, it's still going to work. <laughs> Can um, our tech people remote in to devices? What do you mean by that? Um, like, for instance, I largely work remotely and I can, the folks in our restaurant office can, they just send me a link and they're on my computer operating it as if they were sitting there. Mike, can we do that? We can do it to a degree. Um, so we can remote in and fix some common issues. What we're running into so far is mostly human error with logging on and connecting to home Wi-Fi, so it's not too terribly technical. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to do a shout out for Alex Clark today. He actually drove out to a family's home to help them with a Chromebook. Um, and what we're finding is that we can handle a high percentage of the needs of virtually. Um, so that's our technology update. I think it, I didn't, Plan a, I started to plan a kind of what the board needs to know right now, and I, I was I just had a mind blank about that. So if you have questions <laughs> that um, are questions or comments, I, I just thought that might be easier. The, the level of information that this community has right now is more information than many teachers and many education staff around the state have from their district. So that you're to be commended. Mm -hmm. you know, Absolutely. Amazing Absolutely. Job there. Mm -hmm. Thanks, thanks. Oh, I said, Libby, you'll need to connect to Zoom only. Okay, hold on. I'm connecting. Wait, as I'm doing this, feel free to. I just want to pull in, not just the love of the community, but the tone of the communication has been fantastic, too. It's mm -hmm. been um, very compassionate, and I think um, really taken, taken into account the the level of, of stress and uncertainty of what you're doing. And the planning and the organization the that that communication is coming from. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to start my video too. Forward. Hi, everyone. We have some community members in our Zoom room with Adrian. Okay, so do we want to take some questions from the community if they have that in the Zoom room? Um, I think just given the special circumstances, yeah, let's let's be. I think it's I think it's important to uh, answer community concerns. Okay. All right. So, hi, Adrian. How are you? Yeah, I can only see you right now. I have I don't have you on the big board. Oh wait. Not working for me. Hi, everyone. Yeah, and thank you, Adrian, and everyone who's making the Zoom room possible. Yeah, that's Adrian Gill and, and Anna worked on that together, so which is fantastic. All right, so all, let's see here. You are muted now. Adrian's got the control switch. So Adrian, if we just want to have people talk, can you hear me? Yeah, OK. <laughs> OK. Um, if you have, oh, hi, Amanda's on there too. Hi, I'm looking at all my friends. Um, so <laughs> if you, want to ask a question um, in the community Zoom room, then please uh, take this opportunity to go ahead. Unless, Adrian, you have a different direction for me. So my thing is, if you're looking at ORC, the Orca Media, and Zoom, you're going to have to mute. You're going to have to mute the Orca Media because it's confusing with both happening at the same time. Um, 
And so right now we don't have any questions that are in the chat box. So if you do have a question, um, you can type it in the chat box, which is on the right hand side of your Zoom menu. Um, but as of right now, I haven't received any unless someone wants to come off mute and ask a question. So, um, this is a technical question. Uh, can questions from the public come in the form of chat? Can you see them so yeah. we don't have to, to play yeah. with yeah. multiple, multiple audios? Yep, yeah. yeah, I can see them in the chat. Okay. Um, so, some things. Uh, uh, people probably know, but we'll just reiterate again. Um, first off, one of our one of our core pillars is uh, collective responsibility and collaborative practices, and I have ample evidence that we are doing awesome with that right now <laughs> um, from our team. So I just want to put that out there um, from anybody in our district. Not one person um, did did not play their role in in this effort. Um, so that's awesome. So right now, like I said before, we have plan planned for our maintenance of learning for the next two weeks. Um, so you far, have that, seconds. You should have that um, in your so far, hands at this point, or you can connect to our website, which has the updates and all that kind of stuff on the, on the blog. Um, we, our teachers, will move into continuity of learning. My, I assume we are going to be in this for longer than what the governor has put on right now. Um, that's an assumption. I don't know anything other than what you all know from the news reports, um, but that's what we're planning for. Um, so our teachers will be working together virtually, of course, um, over the next week and a half of how do we make that shift. Um, and, and, we're, and again, we're gonna do the best we can. It is not going to be like normal school. Uh, so there should be very little expectation that there will be. It will be legitimate school, <laughs> but um, we're gonna we're gonna try our hardest with that. Um, our special education services. We're still getting guidance from the state. Yesterday we got guidance, some guidance, and it was contradictory in the guidance. So our law team, which um, the educational lawyers in the state, the main firms have pulled together. I, I'm just imagining them like in a war room, sitting around a very a table that has distance around each other, just like arguing these points out. They're probably having a field day, all you lawyers now, <laughs> arguing law, right? <laughs> um, but they, we have a mechanism that we can send any question to this team. Uh, Visbit's taking care of the price tag, and um, they get it to us by the end of the day. So they're working with lead special educators in, or special ed directors in the state, including Mary um, Lundin, who is our director of special education, to get these questions answered. We simply don't know yet. Um, and this is above the state, it's at the federal level, and we need to get guidance, um, more guidance than what we have right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, parents who have students with special needs, we're working on it, and um, as soon as we have better guidance, we will continue. Special educators and case managers have been contacting families or will contact families and make plans um, collaboratively with families to the best of our ability. Um, so we're, we're going to try to do this virtually, and some of our goals and objectives in our IEPs are very hard to do virtually. So we're going to do what we can to support that and wait for the feds to give us some more guidance on that. Our food service will be up and running tomorrow. Jim Birmingham um, and myself will be doing the food service. Jim will be cooking. No worries there. Um, no worries that I will be cooking. I will be bagging lunches. Um, and what families will do here in Montpelier is they will walk, drive, bike, whatever they want to, um, down the parking lot, past the front door and the flagpole to where the loading dock is. And I will be there at the door of the loading dock with bags. Please don't get out of your car. Um, I will just hand them to you and give you a really great smile. Um, and you can be on your way for that. Any child in the state of Vermont right now can get free food. Um, we do have a mechanism in place to uh, ask families if not an, an anonymous way to ask families if they need this service it is not a bad thing if you need this service that's what we're here for so um, but and we're just asking yes or no just for planning purposes so Jim knows what he's prepping during the week and we know what kind of support Jim's gonna need during the week so we can get people here if we need to and um, Jim can get the food prepared so we have enough how will they know how will they tell you Good question. So we put one out for Thursday and Friday. It's on our website. And then every Sunday at 5 p.m., the district will send out a reminder 
and a new survey for that. So if you could just, just click on that. And if you're not using the food service, you don't need to worry about this. Um, but if you are or you might be, then please um, try to fill that out. We will make it extra, obviously. Um, we did have a question from a family that asked if um, they have a babysitter who's taking care of their kids because of job responsibilities. And because it's a babysitter, if that babysitter can get food as well, yes, well, yes. <laughs> tell us how many bags you need and we will get you the food you need. Um, so other questions was what about weather um, and things like that if, it get, if weather gets bad. Um, that's honestly not a bridge that we've crossed yet, nor have we planned for that yet, but we'll, we'll think about that as well. Thankfully, fingers crossed, we're kind of out of snow weather, <laughs> or at least Welcome bad snow close. weather. I just jinxed myself right there, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so hopefully we'll be able to uh, do that, but if it's raining or anything, I'll come out with my umbrella. Um, right now, the way we're staffing it is with um, district administration. So we've made a schedule where it's myself and another administrator, another principal, um, who will be doing, or Andrew or Grant will be doing that handing of the bags. Um, so foods, and we'll be driving out to Roxbury um, with the van or one of our cars with meals in it so people can come to Roxbury Village School to pick it up. And we've also had offers from Tina Young, the amazing Tina Young and Missy Oxeride to drive to families if need be um, out in Roxbury. Um, if you need to be spelled, is that something that board members could step in and do that to give you guys a break? Yeah, what are our options for relieving you all? Yeah. We have, um, honestly right now I think it's important for the administration to do it because yeah. um, I think people need to see us and people need to see us smiling and people need to, you know, like, and, and quite honestly we need to stay busy. Like the staff left at noon today and it was silent in here and it was the first time that I was like, this sucks. I mean, I've been so busy, but I, I forgive my language, but it was just depressing. <laughs> this place should be filled with happy kids and teachers. Um, so we need something to do right now that's to put our mind and make sure that we're taking care of our kids. Um, so that, um, I think right now it's, it's important for us to do it. But if we need, if, I think as this goes on, our expectation is the need for food will get larger. Um, and so when that happens, then we will mobilize the vast amount of community members who have offered to support us in that. I know um, Cody Chevrolet has offered cars and drivers and all that kind of stuff. So we, we, we have people reaching out to us also. How's the supply chain looking for? For food, it's not bad. Um, all yeah. the restaurants shut down. Yeah, that's so, what, yeah, <laughs> right. So Jim um, Birmingham should be commended as well. Um, the, he has done everything. And I sat with him yesterday to say, okay, what's the final plan? And he said, this, 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 I mean, he's amazing. And I think the food directors of the state have, have pulled together to share. Um, and I asked him that question we get our food deliveries by Reinhardt. We have plenty of food right now because we expected a full week this week. Um, and so we have, um, that food is accessible to us now. And he, he called Reinhardt and said they gave us no indication that this food supplies could dwindle um, through them. Um, so that could change, but right now he's pretty confident that we can get what we need. If it goes on for a tremendously amount long time and people need more and more food, then it might not be our chef's best work, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's a necky chef, he's very good at his job, and he's, I would imagine the food's gonna be pretty good. I mean, it's really, it is pretty good. Um, but by the end of this time, it might be sun butter sandwiches, but we don't know. Yeah. We don't know at this point. So I, we're feeling pretty confident in making sure that our families get food. Again, I just want to reiterate that even if you don't usually access this, if you need the food, get the food. Um, that shouldn't be a worry on people's plate right now. Um, we also prioritize this week mental health services for students to ensure that um, kids who are in need of mental health support can get it, albeit it's not going to be as great as it once was. I'm sorry, Ryan, I feel like my shoulder, my back is here. Um, so mental health support will be available through our social emotional learning team. They were mobilized by Mary Bechtel over the weekend. They worked all weekend to ensure that they had a system in place that students can access. So it was great. Um, and, and so that was part of that letter also on our website of how you can access mental health services. And that to me is just like the food. 
our kids right now don't know what's going on. It's, it's an anxious time. We as an adults are anxious, regardless of how much spin we're trying to put on this, that this is fun, okay? If your child doesn't usually access mental health services, it's okay if they need it now. Call one of us, because they are good at what they do. And <laughs> they love your kid and they wanna help. Um, so parents, we're not expecting you to do everything right here. We have services available. It will be virtual, <laughs> but we're gonna make that work. Um, so that's in place for our kids. That's been my priority over this three this week is to ensure um, those the learning, the food, mental health services, and as much as we could for special education services um, were in place. We we pivoted today to child care. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit. Um, we have some as I talked at the emergency board meeting on Friday. We have some limitations with what the governor is asking us to do. Um, and before I even start, I don't want the I, I don't want anybody to get the idea that I'm belittling this need in any way, shape, or form because I'm not. Um, so just know that I'm losing sleep over this of how we can support. We have some limitations though. We don't have a cleaning enough cleaning supplies to clean our buildings for the long term. If <clears throat> if our buildings were open and we had to clean, then we wouldn't have the supplies potentially when we have to reopen for everybody. Um, that's a major concern of mine, and we need to keep our buildings clean if we have people in it. Right now, we are able to, board members probably saw little yellow tags on doorknobs. Well, they may have only gotten up to the upstairs done, but we've got door, the custodial crew is still here right now working very hard to clean every surface in their buildings. And so they're putting little tags that say clean on the door, so we know, and like they're, so they're not, opening like we're not opening those doors anymore right um, so that's where we are at the at the clean stage all building access has been shut off to all, everybody who's not we haven't granted access to so it's pretty limited um, we have some where our, our lawyers are looking into guidance around can we force people to work um, and it's unclear at this point and ethically I have a very hard time doing that um, I just have to put that out there. <laughs> uh, our instructional assistant staff, um, many have compromised immune systems, many are older. Um, some are ready to go, some are willing and re ready to go. Um, but even if we wouldn't have enough people to do what the governor is asking us to do, um, because if we have that many people in our space, then we have to have, also have to have a full custodial crew. We have to have a full food service crew morning to night because we're talking about breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and we, we're a small district. We simply don't have that capacity. And then when you put on cleaning supplies, it adds an additional challenge. However, it's not that I'm uh, giving up on this. <laughs> so I had a conversation with Adrian Gill and Amanda Garces this morning, they're in the Zoom room um, right now, and uh, both, both women have uh, said, how can we help? Uh, Adrian is the leader of MRPS Pi, the parents group here, and Amanda is just um, superstar extraordinaire at getting people to do what she needs them to do. Um, so, sh so we talked this morning, um, and I'm wondering and hoping um, that we can use at MRPS our vast outreach capabilities, our communication, um, our organizing abilities, our background check abilities, um, and all of our systematic abilities uh, to organize this amazing community into um, volunteering to adopt a child who needs child care help. Um, having said that, I am completely and utterly aware of what ask that is. Uh, I myself have a mom at home who's 74 years old with no spleen. And I don't necessarily think I could take a healthcare worker's child into my home. Um, so I understand that. Uh, so this is an enormous ask. Um, there are people who have uh, said that they're, they'd love to help. This is the area that this community right now needs the community's help on. So I'm, um, what our proposal is is that through community outreach and emails, Amanda already has a whole long list of people who want to volunteer. Um, to, to start that, mobilize that effort, it's gonna take us a couple days to do that, but mobilize that effort and um, connect families of those who are volunteering 
to host a child and those who need somebody to host their child and take care of them. Um, I don't know how articulate I, I am right there, but, no, no. <laughs> but that, that right now is, is the need of our community. Um, it's the limitations of our buildings and our district. And, um, and I think this community can step up to that play. I think this community is awesome and is ready to support each other. So, um, board, I don't know if you want to weigh in on that or ask questions about it, um, but please go ahead and do so. Do you have a sense of the need, of the number of kids? Um, that's our first action step. So right now we have heard from three different um, healthcare type um, industry people. Um, one, uh, one system did um, survey their staff, which was really helpful, and they have, uh, they have 19 kids, so our kids, um, Montpelier Roxbury kids in their system. So um, right now we know we have 19, and um, that, like, that's the number we have right now. Um, but that is just one, one place. And a couple of questions. One, do we know, if we get those numbers, do we know how many actually need care? For instance, if, if, if they just know there's 19 kids in the system, they might be with a yeah. partner who's working at home or you know doesn't work who can provide child care. Um, and then the second question is, even if we get the community to step up, um, could the governor make us do it anyways? Or try to? Will that be a satisfactory solution for the From for the what state? I read in the directive right now, we haven't gotten guidance on this. Yeah. We, we've gotten the directive. That's it. That's all we've gotten. Um, and so, but when I read the directive, it does say this will look different in different communities based on what the capabilities of the community are. Mm -hmm. um, so it does say that. It also does, says um, that school districts will make, will, will make that contribution in the ways that they can. Like there, there is slight leeway in what the governor is asking. I mean, the, the school, school district around the state have our, our legal team even looking into if this is even an ask that can be made. Yeah. Um, so we're still checking on that. And this could change, this could change in 15 minutes. <laughs> um, I, so I think, that, I think that this, for me personally, if I think about the need to spread people right now, the need to keep group size low, um, this to me is the best response to keeping everybody safe instead of bringing large groups of children and staff into a building, personally. Uh, I, because we can still, if, if you took one, that'd be like three kids in your house, right? right. That instead of, you know, 60 here. So, um, so it's a, it's a, I don't know if this is gonna pass muster. I think if we, I think if we fill the need, it will pass muster. Okay. Does that make sense? That totally makes sense. That was my question. I mean, if, if we step up to the plate, um, you know, is, is, the, is the governor looking for creative solutions or did he put forward a directive and he wants the school districts to do this and if you can find another way, so on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. There is one, what was in the directive, um, that actually Amanda pointed me to earlier is that it does say if both parents, or if it's a single parent with, uh, without any other child care options, um, would, would be what qualified for this. So one thing Amanda and Adrian and I did this today was think about okay, what's who's the level one, right? Who's the urgent and who's the level two, right? So when I'm thinking about the level one, it's both parents are in this industry or the single parent is in this industry with no other health care options. And that's bulleted pretty clearly in yeah. the governor's directive. But then there's this level two that I feel ethically obligated to offer to people who work for an hourly low wage who simply, it, it's either I lose my job or we find help for these families, yes. right? So I, I added an, another layer to that too. The people who don't have the financial means or a support system and who work hourly jobs, low, low wage hourly jobs, that they need those jobs to feed the kids and keep their apartment or house. Um, so I, I'm looking at that as well. Um, so, so I've put together some action steps 
potential action steps. One would be find out how many families in our community need support with child care because they fall in these levels one or two categories. We can do that through our communication reach. My, the emails that I sent out from the district, when they all work, <laughs> reaches 3,500 families, just over 3,500 email addresses, I should say. Um, and that's a lot of email addresses. Um, I know for a fact that friends of Montpelier Facebook are really good around sharing things when they want to. <laughs> and so that's another place that gets to more people, right? And if, and if we had help of like, hey, share this, then that gets to more people. Um, so I think we can use social media to our advantage right now to reach as many families as we can to get that information. Um, we would determine the list of volunteers who are willing to adopt a child for the duration um, to provide the needed child care. Amanda has already talked about what that might look like through her mass volunteer system that she's putting together. Um, we would ensure that families volunteering to child care do not fall into the high category risk, the, or the high risk category for COVID-19 because we don't want to put anybody else in danger. Um, we, we can do a 24 hour background check on any individual willing to volunteer who already hasn't done that in our system. We do have over 200 people who have already done that in our system. Um, and we can do just the, the first background check that doesn't involve fingerprinting or anything like that, and it just involves a driver's license. Um, and that will give us um, basically sexual predator and, and criminal back, Vermont criminal background check. Um, so we can do that to help ensure a safety piece and component. Um, we can connect families in need to families volunteering with our organizational efforts, and we can continue to reach out as this goes on to see who where the need is here. Go ahead. Uh, the the um, section of the demographic of our community that is um, an hourly worker or isn't doesn't fall under the the health the health care yeah. worker um, group that you mentioned before. Those families should reach out to the Department of Labor because unemployed unemployment insurance benefits that program has been greatly expanded and there's talk of expanding it further. So for those families who aren't health care workers who find themselves temporarily unemployed, please do reach out to the Department of Labor because you know. These are extraordinary times, and there are extraordinary provisions being put in place by the state. Yeah, and you just reminded me, Andrew, that um, I was on the phone a couple times with Ann Watson today, the mayor of Montpelier, of course, and they're meeting, I think, right now, actually, in an emergency meeting as well, and the city is also thinking about this, and Ann and I were putting our heads together around how we can use other services in the city, um, particularly uh, to ensure um, and sure children get the care that they need. I have some questions about the child Please. care that haven't been asked yet. Um, where would the where would the child care be held? Are we talking about when you're talking about families adopting kids during this time? Are we talking say we have a health care worker named uh, Rob and Rob is a single parent and Rob's daughter uh, gets adopted by Adrian Gill and her family. Adrian, I'm just using you as an example here. Would uh, Rob's daughter then stay with Adrian Gill for a couple of weeks? Is that the plan? Or no, just during, when they need during the day. Yeah, just during the day. Yeah, I'm not talking okay. overnight or anything like that. Uh, but, um, I don't, and I don't think that's what the directive asks. No. It certainly would further complicate the issue for school systems. <laughs> that actually needs to be thinking about people who are on second and third shifts, though. Yeah, no. there, yeah. Just nothing about, about this is. I had, well, I just <laughs> hadn't. I literally hadn't thought about it until now, and then I thought, oh, yeah. so some kids are alone at night, or, or, or could, could be potentially. Alone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which but is another reason why the school. Why is school is not a practical. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although you have to think that if, well, yeah, no, it depends on if if if, if it's a someone who's used to a night shift, but even if it's someone who's used to a night shift, given the nature of this virus, if they were having, you know, a parent, a grandparent watch, they may, yeah, want a different solution. Now. Yeah, that was what I was thinking. Yeah. Ordinarily, obviously, someone's theoretically someone's yeah. staying home, but yeah, since it's often a person who's in a risk group. 
Yeah, and there may be people right now who are in the, the medical field who are not working night shifts who, who may end up working night shifts. Did you have more questions? I have one other question. I realize just about all the other ones have been answered. Have we been talking to students about the importance of social distancing during this time? Because obviously if one student goes and meets up with another student to, you know, things can... We were talking about it when we had them. Mm -hmm. We don't have them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can tell you from observing on the streets, they are not currently adhering, <laughs> um, just just driving around today. Um, so I don't know what we as a community can do, because it's really hard. I was actually just talking to Libby. Um, I work for Outright Vermont, which is a youth organization, and any time that we had youth in place together, it was virtually impossible to keep them apart. Um, so it, it's really going to take some extremely intentional and caring grown-up effort to help people understand um, because littles aren't designed to stay apart like I, that. I have a thought. Um, what if uh, families, this is just a proposal, wanted to share this, what if families, what if certain families, their kids were really struggling in isolation, if like one or two families had closed circuit um, interactions with each other, but they weren't interacting with others directly. I mean, I had that set up in my house. Yeah. So our best friends, we we had a we had a family family meeting where we had Google a uh, Google Hangout last night, and we just said this is what the four of us are promising to each other, so that our kids can interact with each other. Um, I think I think families are doing that organically. Yeah. Um, I think so there's a lot of that happening, but it is harder for teenagers. Teenagers are not, that's not a model that works, I think, no. as well for teenagers as it does for younger kids. Yeah. And it's hard. This is not, this is not too easy. No. It hasn't been easy yet, but we are so not out of the woods about how to best support our kids right now. Libby, I would just say I think your, the proposal that you guys have talked about is really elegant and, and a much more rational and humane way to deal with the thing we're trying to deal with, this need for childcare, rather than bringing everybody into a building where a week ago we knew we didn't have enough cleaning supplies. I mean, that for me makes it kind of a non-starter right out of the gate. Um, and we do have a lot of tweens and teenagers who are home and have time who may also be able to help with other kids coming into their home. So oh, absolutely. I think, I, think, I think it's the best, like you said, do the best we can for the kids with what we've got. And that makes sense to me. And the grassroots piece of it means that in the event that the legal team were to say actually these schools can't or shouldn't be part of it, if if that that responsibility lifts a grassroots team can continue doing things. I don't I, I don't imagine that we would probably say like hands off, not our problem. But um, in in the event that you know mandate changes, um, it'll be nice if people are more or less holding it themselves. Um, Ryan, do you have any sense about, I don't mean to put you on the spot or say, speak for all Roxbury, um, but do you have any sense of how many people might fall into this category in Roxbury? And so, I'd agree with kind of follow up Mara's comment that I like the systematic approach that what you're um, proposing to us. It essentially, it's happening informally right now, right. but the background checks, the the placement of the folks who wouldn't necessarily interact with each other, it's great because this is happening right now. Right. When you were discussing, you had reached out to one of the healthcare providers, and it was CVMC, Gifford, one of the local hospitals, but it would probably be worthwhile to have those institutions themselves survey their staff. Yeah, that's, that's, no, that's what one, one did. They yeah. surveyed their staff, yeah. Right, rather than us, like, hey, who this, that, whatever, ask them specifically. Right. Ooh, meets this criteria, who is it that needs the help, and then you're gonna have the level one and the level two will be trickier to track down, but mm -hmm. like really push them to help identify those employees and the families that are gonna be you know, in the most need. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I think this is happening right now informally in Roxbury. Um, healthcare families, I haven't heard, again, there's a lot of conversations right now, how we can help, where is this going? Um, yeah. I don't think. Anybody's going to be totally stranded right now, but again, 
I can't say for sure, but yeah. there's a lot of unknowns and schedules are constantly changing, not just for the kids. It's I know, we're all, we're be, all in the stage of how do we do this. Right, the family yeah. might be totally set right now, but by Friday, even tomorrow, it could be a totally different ballgame again, so. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It could be a totally different ballgame in 10 minutes. Um, so, was the, sorry, go was ahead. the directive also for ages six and up or eight and up or something? It had Sixth kind of through eighth grade. Six through eight. Six, six, six years old, six years old through eight, eight grade. Grade. yes. Okay, and then the presumption being that five or under would be managed by that child care. <coughs> yeah, so our regional director, Rebecca Webb, who came to talk with y'all a couple yep. um, board meetings ago, she is working um, to figure out preschool. She can't do it for like every preschool age kid in every town in our region, you know, but she's she's working through and wading through requirements waivers what do we you know who can who where are the spaces how many spaces she's trying to do that work right now and she's on it um, but that is not technically the school district's responsibility but we're still trying to do what we can to support it and becca is our person to do that for us yeah um yeah, uh, so we have some chat here. I'll just, um, uh, just going back, the food pickup time at MHS tomorrow is um, 11 to 12. Um, and it is on our website. All the food pickup time is on our website, which, oh, Anna's, Anna's got the, Anna's good. <laughs> She's got the link right below that comment. <laughs> um, we also need those who maybe fall outside of healthcare. Yes, our level one has the um, bullet points. That's Amanda. So we have the bullet points of everybody who qualifies based on the directive. Um, and I want to make sure that you know it's the food service people and the custodians and the people who are doing the behind the scenes work um, recognize that we'll do everything we can for you as well. Um, and I, I did have groceries. Somebody said the list included grocery in place, and I actually am not sure if it had it on there, but I added it on to ours, whether it is or not. We added it on. Um, and that's. Uh, and Amanda asked early what will happen with leftover food. I assume those meals not picked up or distributed. We have a um, Jim Birmingham already has a relationship with our food bank, food banks, um, and so he delivers any uh, leftover food to food banks. He does that now, he'll continue to do that. So um, it will still be in a place where people in need can get it. Anything else around this next directive? The last thing I will say with this, this one is that school, I was on the, uh, a hangout with school districts with our region today. All of us are trying to figure this out right now. Um, and all of us are thinking about it differently. Every community is different. Every need is different. Um, Barry has a different need potentially than we do because many healthcare workers live in Barry. Um, and so, so schools, are, districts are trying to figure out this differently. Um, and so we're just, we're, again, we're all doing the best we can, but um, the fact that U32 is doing something that we're not yeah, we're different districts, and we have different needs, and we have different opportunities within our district, um, or what we can do. So it's going to look different um, by community. If this goes on for a longer than anticipated, um, and if the our cleaning supply situation improves, um, is that a consideration that um, at that point uh, we may we, think about something else? There is nothing definitive right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we can keep talking to our suppliers um, around the cleaning supplies, absolutely. My hunch is we haven't gotten this yet from them, but it's happened in other states. We have evidence that it's happening in Connecticut and other places that they're prioritizing cleaning supplies to um, hospitals and and that air that field and, and nursing homes and things like that which is what we want them to do yep. you know and so if there was a mass hoarding and then people bought more and everybody up their game as soon as this came on right and so um, everybody ordered more <laughs> and then um, and then I, even school districts like some of my colleagues were like well we ordered for the year so we should be good but then they were thinking about they were like 
but we're using way more right now than we ever did before. We may not have enough for the year, you know? Um, so if suppliers catch up, now mind you, shipping is halting, but trucking is halting, you know, like things that go beyond just the supplier's warehouse are starting to halt. So um, my, my major fear is that they, we would put kids and people into our buildings, clear the build, clean, have to clean, right? And then they say, and now we open schools and we have a limited supply and we can't re-up it. And then I have to close for that, right? Um, so there's so many unknowns here, but yes, as with any of this, if we um, get different information or different supplies, or then we we will pivot on a dime. Um, somebody, can I just read a couple more yeah, on here? Please do. Um, can food be placed near the vehicle instead of handing directly into the vehicle? Absolutely. If a family would rather me do that, or rather, when the principals do that, absolutely. Um, any advice for how to get teenagers to remain social with their friends? <laughs> um, I love that question. I have the same answers that you probably do. <laughs> um, so I've seen Netflix has like viewing parties going on. I know my sixth grader was on fa uh, FaceTime with his friends. All of a sudden he has free reign to FaceTime and I'm not really sure where that thought came into his head, but that's what he was doing. Um, I know they're all trying to socialize online, and, and I think that's what we have to do. Make some videos, do some funny things, become a YouTube star. I don't know. <laughs> also, check in with um, youth serving organizations. Like, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what Washington County Youth Services Bureau or um, the Basement Teen Center, et cetera, are kind of imagining at the moment. But I know, for instance, Outright is moving all of its youth supporting services online that people can access. So that's like, support groups that may be happening that are youth intended for them to interact might be actually facilitated and supported. It's worth doing some Googling. Yeah, yeah, Mars the expert in the, the team field. The team field. And then the last message right before I promise Pi's up next, Adrian, I, I haven't forgotten about you. I know I'm talking a lot, but a lot's been going on. <laughs> um, the, the last thing I wanna say is that um, just like educators and schools are doing the best you can, parents, you're doing the best you can. If you're not having your kids, it's not going to be like regular school, and that's okay. Um, it's okay if you don't know what to do. We are here to support you in that. But right now, make sure your kid is loved. Make sure you smile at them, you laugh at them, you give them accurate information, and you calm their fears. That's what we need you to do right now. Um, the learning will take care of itself. We will, we'll make sure that happens. Um, but right now, the, the more important thing is to make sure your kid's loved, happy, healthy. Um, and, and don't worry about the rest. <laughs> we'll figure the rest out. That's the important thing right now, I think, for all of us. Um, and with that, Adrian. Oh, hold on. You oh, have, no, Jim's you have ready. board action on hourly employees on the agenda. We I took care of that on over. Friday. Yeah, I think okay, I just wanted to make Friday. sure I'm that you need action there. Okay, perfect. All right, Adrian, you're up. Adrian Hill, do you want to do, do you want to do the MRPS? You got to unmute yourself. Maybe. Zoom failures. No, she's right there. I'm not sure. Thanks, Adrian. Adrian Hill, do you want to show up? Do you want to do the MRPS? It's a delay. Adrian, can you hear her? You got to unmute yourself. You're muted, Adrian. I am unmuting Jill Linda and Teresa. Yeah, she's right there. I'm not sure. Thanks, Adrian. Adrian, you know, do you want to show? Do you want to do the MRPS? I think they're just confused. Adrian, you know, do you want to show? Do you want to do the MRPS? Adrian, can you hear her? You gotta unmute yourself. Adrian, can you hear her? You gotta unmute yourself. So can you? 
Um, so under needs, I had child care, <clears throat> meal prep and distribution, financial assistance, emotional and social support, curriculum support, communication support, and um, I think Amanda's going to speak separately, but we had also talked about um, the mutual, uh, Montpelier Mutual Aid website, grassroots community organizing for general help, basically matching volunteers um, where there is community needs. But I believe Amanda's going to speak separately. Um, in order to be effective, the MRPS PI would propose creation of a representative and equitable task force uh, if it were to um, further assist the district's work. Uh, I think it probably makes sense to skip the, the full description of what we envisioned as a task force. A couple of highlights um, were just the idea of um, spreading the work up, out and utilizing how, um, how many people we are able to touch. Libby mentioned that before about getting the word out through. <laughs> Facebook and whatnot, um, if you added up all of the people that the parents groups kind of reach out to and involve, it's hundreds and hundreds of community members, mostly parents, but also community members who, are, who uh, no longer have kids in the school system. Um, the PI board offers to play an active role in creating and managing any such task force and could lead any coordination and convening of the volunteers and services. Um, and just to close and say, obviously, we feel that we're all in this together, as we have stated. Our community is filled with caring, talented, engaged individuals who really want to help ease the burden that this is bringing on us. Um, and so Pi is ready to partner with all the incredible assets in our communities and um, just feel like we want to be part of um, just to help in any way that we can. Um, so thanks for the opportunity to participate in the meeting tonight, and um, we would look forward to um, hearing, you know, how you envision addressing some of the needs you've already discussed, and just how maybe brainstorming now or talking further how MRPS Pi can support any and all of this. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Amanda, well, would you like? Do you need? Were you going to talk about something too? And this is Adrian. I think that was it. So we will just turn it over um, for discussion at this point, unless Amanda wants to jump in. And I'm not sure what the plan was. Sure. <laughs> I can do that. This is Amanda Garces. Um, can you hear me? Yep. So yeah, so there, uh, there's uh, five people uh, that have mobilized um, to organize a grassroots movement to support our community itself. Um, so we'll call them Montpelier Mutual Aid and um, amazing organizers. Uh, there's, there's six of us right now, three who are parents of UES. Um, and so what we're doing, we, we created a website um, that has a needs form and a volunteer form. We have over 215 people that have signed up to volunteer. The needs have not really started coming in yet, but we uh, see an uptick of what that's going to look like. Uh, we had a meeting this afternoon to add the conversation about childcare, and we're going to start pushing that to volunteers to see who would be willing um, to take part of the adopted child. So I think that uh, we're working with different sectors in the community, from food banks to um, with, with, with Anne as well, uh, the mayor of the town, uh, to support kind of the efforts. Um, also, like another layer, because many parents are UES parents, would also be talking directly to that, to, to Maria, in creating other forms locally for, for the school, which will connect with the MRCPI. And one of that idea is to have coordinators for each of the classrooms um, to kind of support the teachers and be able to uh, just get the needs and then connect them to the larger wider, whether it is things that the district cannot provide, you know, like other groceries outside of uh, what you're offering for food. And so we're, I just um, 
wanted to share that, you know, we're here. Um, I want to say thank you to the district, to Libby, to Ryan, to all the principals for, and the teachers and the janitors and everybody who's doing amazing work. And that we're here as a resource. Our plan has been to kind of wait for the needs to come and for you guys to kind of settle. But um, yeah, we are here to support and we hope that, you know, as part of the district that you can push that uh, needs because we do have a, a kind of wider net of the other organizations that are coming in to support. Abscon Juice um, has Ali Johnson, who's also going to be using the gleaning system in Montpelier. Uh, that will be working statewide, uh, but in Montpelier as well, in central Vermont, to also have another layer of volunteers and support. So there's a lot happening, and we are going to find a way to put it all in one place so that everybody knows how to access what. But at the end, what we're going to need as a community is connection and being able to not one group take on all the burden because there's many hands. And so that's all we want to offer the district, that there's lots of us. Thank you, Nanelo. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all. <laughs> um, so what I think next steps would be for me to connect again with Adrian and Amanda and anybody else who they deem fit. Um, would a board member like to be on that as well? or do you feel a board member should be or wants to be or doesn't want to be or what do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> I think the board should be involved. I think so yeah. too. I think that makes sense. Um, yeah. I'm happy to be our board representative. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jill. Thank you. And Jill, there are new needs that we haven't expected. Please be sure to let us know as soon as anything surprising might pop up. Okay, so I think the next action step with this would be for me, I'll connect with Amanda, Adrian, and Jill. And Adrian and Amanda, you can add anybody to that list as well, um, simply because you know better than I right now. Um, so I trust you ladies will help me out there and we'll get going. Libby, can you add me too? Yes, Great. and Bridge, Great. yeah. Great. Yes, absolutely. Um, just a couple updates because I'm like going back and forth from Zoom to Google Hangout. Um, I just went on Google Hangout to see the chat, and my admin is like correcting and giving me info. So Andrew Rosa says Tom Allen, who's our our custodial supervisor, who has been nothing but amazing, will be looking at long term months ahead availability for cleaning supplies next week. So there, those gentlemen are on it. I was told not to type. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And I think, I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's it. Um, well, thank you so much, Brian. We don't need to take any formal action, do we? I don't think so, because yeah. it's kind of community outreach. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, thank you very much. That's a huge help. And thank you, Bridget and Jill, for um, yeah. volunteering to be part of that. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. Excellent. Um, so we can go to the next uh, item, which is, I think we can do pretty quickly, which is board business. <laughs> Let me start trying this electronically, which is... I'm looking at this. Scheduled retreat and topics. Scheduled retreat and topics. Um, Does that really make sense right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm not> <laughs> <laughs> it was on there prior to <laughs> madness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we can um, table those for another meeting. I, I do want to talk briefly about how we um, want to conduct meetings going forward, uh, at least until um, we're at a point where uh, we are feeling more confident that it's safe to uh, socially gather. Mm -hmm. um, we can talk about online, but I'm assuming we would just do some sort of um, either Zoom yeah, or Yeah, the Hangouts hangout form. works well, and I think there is the lawyers are and the legislature actually is looking into waiving some open meeting law re course, restrictions okay. and requirements right now. Um, I I feel like that will probably go through. Um, I, would they think, are. I would hope. Yeah, so we'll be receiving updated guidance. legal guidance on 
how to continue in yeah. the world we now know um, as a board soon. Yeah, and I think obviously it's going to be, um, you know, well, it may not be, but it will certainly be different for, for the public to view that. So we should give thought to how um, we want to broadcast it. It might just be that we've got, you know, Brady Bunch style board meetings uh, <laughs> on people's screens if they want to choose them, but I think we can. But uh, I know, especially, you know, uh, I'm surprised how many people watch our board meetings when things are quiet. And <laughs> I'm sure that the there is a much heightened interest in, in these meetings now. So I want to make sure the public can do that. Can you set up some creative solution to that too? They might have some ideas. Yeah. Maybe right. one person's in the studio or something. Like that. Can't you set up Zoom so that only certain people have video and the yeah, ability to we, talk, and then yeah. other people can I only think watch? We're facile with the tech piece, and you know who we have on on our board is Jerry Huck. Huh. <laughs> he works at this all the time. That's right. So <laughs> yes. might right. be tagging Jerry Huck and yeah. saying, "You're it." Definitely. Now, I mean, the Zooms I use usually, if it's more than a certain number, it'll pick up on who's talking, and, and you won't get, you know. But I think it can it can actually be set up so that some some if you get one kind of link, you don't even have a video option. You're just you're, you're just an observer. And okay. If you're if you get a different kind of link, you're able to participate. Okay. okay. Should we um, add to our future parking lot just the board vacancy, just to add that to the sort of get to this for me? Yes, get to that or no. Um, we need to. Although, to be honest with you, I don't want to part. I don't want to put that too long because I, I do feel, um, you know, this is a pretty critical time for the board to be engaged, and um, you know, there's there's a voice missing. So um, um, I, I have done a little bit of reach. Strike it when it's hot, Jim. Lots of people are not you know are home right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I do. I've, I've gotten. Um, at least one person has expressed some interest, but um, I actually forget what our timetable was for that. It was going to be not the next meeting, but it was going to be the seventeenth. It was going to be the seventeenth. Seventeenth of April, I believe. Yeah. Can we stick to um, that? Let's try to stick to that. I just want to encourage the public. Uh, uh, yeah, there is there is no more important time than now um, yeah. to serve. Uh, we still have to get a clarity in the answer of what our, what our appointment would uh, would be till November when there there is an election, um, a very important one, um, and or till the next town meeting day. Uh, but regardless, the the term would be appointed till one of those two dates, um, and then there would be the option to either uh, run for the remainder of of the term um, or to decide that. Um, you, you don't want to. So, um, is if someone is interested, do they contact you? Is that yes? Okay. So please just contact me, or you can contact Libby and Chicken Fourteen. So uh, contact Libby or me, okay. but um, and we'll we'll uh, okay. you and we'll see we'll see how we're doing at the next meeting. If um, if we have some good interest, we can make a decision on the seventeenth. And if we feel we need to extend it uh, another. Did the Zoom crew get that, by the way? All of those engaged parents? Yes. <laughs> Make sure they hear this? Yes. Um, Libby, the discussion of uh, the board vacancy just reminded me of our principal searches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I realized that like, they weren't a priority for the last couple of weeks, but I just wondered, looking forward, if there's any way that those can proceed at this point or are proceeding. Yeah, well, they're going to have to. <laughs> well, that's what um, So we, um, that's on my. I have a list in our conference room over there on the wall that says when you can breathe again. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things that's on there. Um, and so I will most likely start thinking about that again and, and put my head together with Anna around how we can do that virtually. Mm -hmm. um, the interviews, I don't see a problem doing virtually with our interview team. So right now where we are is we have our candidates. We were supposed to interview on Tuesday for Main Street Middle School. Um, and that just could not happen. No, yeah, Tuesday. Um, could not happen, so um, we have them on hold right now, and we could do those virtually um, with our team, I think. And then for the important part is staff meet and greet. 
I, I, I know the kids are really important too, but I think it'd be really hard. So I think right now, staff meet and greet and parent meet and greet virtually somehow through Zoom or. Yeah, I think. We'll that, figure it out. Yeah, no, I think we're just going to have to accept that we'll do the best we can of those and we'll be um, yeah. not, not, it, 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 we can only do so much. Yeah, um, another yeah. thought I had was for people to send questions that I just sat in a public way and, and asked. And asked, and we could tape record that, and then it's just going to be a slower process. Yeah. And then people could provide feedback that way. Like I thought about a couple of days. We have two finalists for Roxbury, which um, again, we had to push back. Actually, we pushed it back before this all happened, but because um, we wanted it to match the Main Street timeline. Um, because some of the candidates are similar. So we push that back so our candidates are very involved in their own school's response to COVID-19 right now, and so they are very understanding as well. Um, so, so that we'll, we'll figure out, they're in a little different stage, but um, we'll, we'll figure that out the same way. And then we have the Director of, Special, um, Director of Student Services. We did get the interviews in for that, um, and we have, we have two finalists currently um, that we had set to come see us this past Wednesday for leadership to meet, and that just didn't happen. So um, we'll probably do that virtually as well. I think in the in the next you know week or two, for administrators, things will will get down out of this this um, insane mode that we're in right now, and so we'll be able to. Once we take a little mental break, we'll be able to think through some of these other challenges that are ahead. But I can't see any reason why we can't figure this out virtually. It just might take longer. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I think that's it, except for the executive session. I propose that we just keep executive session in here um, because our usually executive session room is um, cozier, and cozy is not what we're aiming for right now. Um, <laughs> So Libby, I know I, I this is Anna. Well for, for Orca to Go ahead, Anna. Um, please, uh, there's two more questions from the parent group in the Zoom chat. I can't see where. Can you just ask them? Because I'm not seeing them. Um, yes, Roxanne Garland would like to make a statement. Um, so it would be good if you could rejoin the Zoom so that she can be unmuted to make that. Yeah, I have the Zoom open. Okay. And then I'll read you first before Roxanne, I'll read you a question from Amy Gendron, G-E-N-D-R-O-N. G -E -N -D -R -O -N. Um, she would like to submit a concern. She is, con she is concerned about the child care model being proposed for those who have multiple children, three in her example. Uh, that, that is a lot for a family to take in their own home daily. Yeah. Thank you for that complication. Not saying that sarcastically, I'm saying that because we, we hadn't thought about that complication. So thank you for putting that into our brains for us to consider. Any of the other ones, Anna? Um, just from Roxanne in the Zoom. I have just um, told her to unmute and make her statement. OK.
making sure that our children are um, smart and that we're protecting them when they go out without our supervision. Um, I just think it's something we're going to want to consider um, in the longer term um, if we're going to be out of school for an extended period of time, but maybe we're not as much at risk. Do you guys understand where I'm coming mm -hmm. from? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Um, that's all. Just something to consider. I'm going to go back on mute. Okay. That's a good message for the community. Okay. Okay, um, so I need a motion to go into executive session.